You're listening to Convenience Matters, brought to you by Nax. We'll talk about what we see at stores and what the future may hold for our industry. At the 2024 Nax State Industry Summit, we talked about industry numbers, we talked about trends, we talked about things that could impact 2024. We're going to continue that conversation today. Joining us today on Convenience Matters is Chris Rapinick. He is Managing Director of Nax Research, which means he knows the numbers both within our industry and the numbers that are affecting our industry. So thanks for joining us today, Chris. Hey, thanks for the time. Always love to get on with you guys. So we're at that moment in time where in a few weeks, the next SOI report of 2023 data is coming out. The June issue of Nax Magazine is coming out. Dozens, mm-hmm. hundreds of pages looking at everything. Teeing that up, you know, we're, we're not going to we're gonna dive into hundreds of pages here now. But, but basically, it was a pretty good year last year. There were some, certainly some, some worrisome things that we saw. Do you want to give the best summary? I could give a summary, but why don't you give a summary of, of what was the takeaway from the Nax SOI Summit? Certainly. So first off, you know, going back to 22, I think probably the concern for most folks in the business was whether or not fuel margins would hold or not. 2022 gave us the opportunity to have extra cash as an industry and able to kind of do some things, you know, whether it was open a new store or remodel or whatever. But expenses in general have been crazy the past few years. You know, we've talked about that on your podcast before. Direct operating expenses have been insane for especially the last three years. Mm -hmm. So some of those things, we believe retailers are using some of that extra gross profit to do improvements. But in a lot of cases, too, probably especially for the smaller ones, they need that gross profit that's coming from super high fuel margins just to kind of keep the doors open. So I believe the theme of this year's SOI Summit was, where's the gross profit coming from this year? How can we move further away from this kind of variable fuel model where theoretically you could get a 42 cent margin in year one and you could go back down to 30 cents in year two. And that's a lot of money. So that's definitely the first thing was, you know, how does fuel look? Are things actually slowing down? For fuel, are people starting to actually buy more EVs? In this particular case, margins held pretty good, just a cent off or so from 22 to 23. And the good news is is there was actually a positive um, growth in fuel volumes this year, too. So if you've been paying any attention or if you're in the business, a retailer or a supplier, you've probably noticed that fuel prices were down a lot in 23, almost 12 percent. So when we think about retailers building revenue and earning gross profits or whatever, that was a pretty big hole to dig out of in the first place. So back again to the theme for the year, heck yeah, it turned out pretty Mm -hmm. good for what we thought it could have happened. Um, Most of that did it. So yeah, good year. And, you know, I've been doing this 15 years and it always amazes me how things just kind of come together at the end. I don't know. You guys have been around for a long time too. Mm. It's crazy how, you know, you, you get 42 cent fuel margins one year and then the next year you get whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's resiliency. I know for the, for the industry and we're kind of ready for anything. And uh, that shows when you can still have a good year and be down 12% in your main sales driver. Yeah. You know, we, the last podcast we were on, we, we teed it up a little bit that the, the end of 2023 didn't look as bright as the year had be, begun. Yes. <laughs> so, so from what I'm hearing, there's, there's might be a little carryover into, you know, the first quarter, maybe two of this year. Yep, for sure. So if you go back again to 22, the, the fourth quarter was where things really started ramping up, especially inflationary pricing Mm -hmm. things and stuff like that. So, and the business was pretty good, by the way. It wasn't just all inflation. But when you go back into seeing how 23 runs, you know, we have these big numbers that we have to cycle. And the business in 23 was kind of soft in the fourth quarter. So it kind of drops. So, you know, when we compare year over year, we see things like 8% down in, in inside transactions or, you know, fuel sales down another 9%. And what we've seen so far in 2024 is a couple of things. 
First off, if you remember again, back in last year at 23, we were seeing huge food service bumps, like 20 plus percent in sales. This year, it's time to pay the piper, and it's only about 4% now. Same thing for merchandise. We were 6 or 7% up through you know, most of the year last year, and now we're sitting at like 1.5% up. So you can see a couple things. Number one, I think that the consumer is probably a little weary. Sentiment's not as good as it had been. Not spending as much, you know, uh, discretionary income would be number one. And number two, the numbers were just huge, huge last year. When you're looking at, you know, candy growing by 18% and, mm-hmm. and salty snacks growing by 24 or whatever, these huge numbers, it always comes back to you. So it's just right now we're paying that piper. Or the industry and, is. I'm I'm sitting at my desk, but the industry is paying the piper. <laughs> and and part of that with these huge numbers, it was related to inflation too. Yes. The second year yeah. of, of higher than typical inflation pushing up prices. Yeah. So if you guys will remember back to well the twenty two well the the SY summit that happened in twenty three was the first time we'd ever introduced yeah. this inflation model. And we realized, man, this is pretty close to kind of how things are. You know, we got some support from our, you know, our friends at NIQ to kind of check back. And, you know, that model is, is real and actually pretty accurate. So the whole point of, of that is, is that I think for merchandise in 23, it was like maybe 7% up just mm-hmm. based on inflation. And then last year was like 5.7. So with that being said, Inflation still has an impact, and you're right, Jeff. That's a cycle, 7%, a 7% increase in sales just from the get-go, right? Because pricing went up 7%. Yeah. So t- tough first quarter for sure, and, and this did start back in the fourth quarter of 23. Well, I want to throw out a big word, and I want to, I want to use it two different ways. And it's a word that, that has been used at previous SOI summits perhaps a decade ago bifurcation. Mm. Yes. And sure. bifurcation, a fancy word, it means, you know, there's two different things going on. Let's let's talk about bifurcation first off at the retail level. Okay. Uh, because we are seeing that there there's there there can be haves and have nots in terms of how they're doing. Do you want to talk about that in what we saw in 2023? and perhaps is continuing in 2024. Yeah, sure thing. So there's definitely a huge difference between a single store operator and you know someone with 10 stores, but there's an even bigger one when you look at a single store operator compared to a site or a chain with 500. Mm-hmm. So what we've been seeing recently is, is that the single store guys are really taking it tough because they're not able to compete when it comes to fuel prices. They can't afford to take a 10 cent you know, decrease because they need the 42 cent margins. <clears throat> so that's definitely the first thing. I think the second thing is as well is this, and we talk about this a lot in the research department. You have like this legacy building, you know, that's probably relatively small. They're still focused on fuel, still focused on tobacco, which that's that's been a good business and it remains a good business. But the point of all this is is that the box is probably not going to change a lot for these guys because they're sitting in, in a small box already. So if you think about someone with a made to order food service program or in inside seating or any of those things that the, the big guys are doing now, they just don't have the opportunity to c- compete that way. So when you think about this whole bifurcation thing, it's also, you know, small versus large. And that's what it comes down to. And we've seen the growth are from folks that are a aggregators. So like a GPM is still picking up sites. And then you have all the guys that grow organically, you know, the Wawa's and the Sheets, who rarely, if ever, do an acquisition. So, yeah, so I think that that's the thing is that, you know, these guys are still becoming less profitable as the rest of the industry bumps. You know, a lot of the smaller guys are branded stores where they have branded fuel. Most of the guys that are growing now have their own brand. They don't need the brand, the fuel brand to, to, mm-hmm. to support them so much. So anyway, so sure, you know, branded, small format, legacy, let's, you know, focus on gas and cigarettes versus let me get, get my food off for a right and then they will come, right? Mm-hmm. So it's that's the bifurcation right there. Let, let me look at bifurcation, where I want to talk about bifurcation a second way. And sure. this is a way that we heard about it a little bit at the SOI Summit this year, bifurcation with customers and the ha- in, in how particularly since the pandemic, there there's almost two different types of people in the country. People have done well the last five years and people who have yes. not done well. If you have money in the stock market, 
done pretty well the past year. If you have a home, it has increased in value in most parts of the country. Then on the other side, uh, the, with a bifurcation, you have credit card debt at all times highs. You have a remarkable number of people who have maxed out their credit cards. And, and there are people who are struggling. Yes. And because of that, they have to make different decisions yeah. on what they do going out. Do they buy the same things? Do they trade down? What are the numbers showing? And talk a little bit about the conversations that took place at the SY Summit related to this bifurcation of customers. Yeah, so there's, there's two things that we've been looking at and it contributes to the bifurcation, or, or at least the signal of it anyway. The first thing is, is that pump transactions, the ones outside, have gone up and inside transactions continue to decline because there are more folks that think to themselves, I'm on a fixed budget. I can't afford to do both, but I have to get to work. Mm. So it's it's pretty clear that more people are just you know pumping and running versus how it used to be. There was you know, maybe there's a good chance that they would go inside. So inside transactions are down like four percent off a pretty soft year last year. Uh, hopefully that's as bad as it gets, but it's pretty indicative of the fact that people aren't going in as frequently. And then I guess the second thing that I was thinking about as far as bifurcation goes is that um, our competition is getting even better. So, you know, the dollar guys, Family Dollar, Dollar Tree, and those guys, they're, they're competing for our customer. And it's pretty clear, you know, to me that, you know, looking at some of their financial reports or whatever, they're snagging some of the folks that we would normally have in our stores. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a real thing. And then finally, probably our basket value. It's been growing, but it's not growing like an item. It's growing like two or three cents at, at a time. So what, what we think about that is, is that it's really focused on pricing as well. Unit counts are down, basket counts up. It kind of tells you one thing. It's just more and more, more expensive. And you know that's part of it, obviously. So I believe, yes, people are going into the stores and either buying one item when they used to buy two. Or they're looking to trade down to maybe a private label item versus a brand name. Yeah. Makes sense. And it's tough all over, for sure. I mean, everyone's uncomfortable. It's an election year. All that good stuff. It makes people, you know, a little anxious. Yeah. So other events that we do besides the State and Industry Summit where folks can grab data, you, you obviously do... Another recap in October at the next show mm -hmm. where folks can kind of see what has progressed throughout the year. In addition to what we, we said at the summit, I'm recapping 2023. You're also mm -hmm. doing me a solid and kicking off our third yes. Max Food Safety Forum, which we're going to do in conjunction at the show again this year. But then we're going to move it for 2025 to the State yes. of the Industry Summit because the food service piece is just so huge. And you see Agreed. that, especially when you were talking about the top performers, they just excel. And when you get in the top performers, when you get into the top decile performers, even it's just astonishing how it is. how they how they separate themselves from the pack with food. Um, Absolutely. And that goes back to the same bifurcation thing. You know, there are companies that they draw their customer in with their food offer and then they just happen to get gas there, mm -hmm. which is you know basically the exact opposite of how our models historically been. But it's crazy to see, you know, the number of transactions that these guys do. You know, it's like six times the, the bottom decile or whatever. It's amazing to me. And every year I look at it and I'm like, wow. This mm -hmm. is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's definitely an interesting way to look at it. And, you know, I'm sure that it works that way in other ind industry too. But when you're looking at 152,000 sites, that fork in the road is huge. Yeah. One of the things that we have talked about as an industry and on podcasts is speed of service. Mm -hmm. And... We pride ourselves, our industry, we can get you in, get you out yeah. super fast. Mm -hmm. We have dated consumer data that shows that the average time somebody spends inside a store is three minutes and 33 seconds. Yeah. We've done some other consumer surveys. Where we find majority of them say they're in and out in under four minutes. Yeah. And that's, that's awesome. And over the years, we've named our stores after things that, that indicate speed of service. And misspelled, yes. that word. Yes, misspelled, because there's only so many correct <laughs> ways to well, spell. And I'll be quick with Q-U. Yeah. Yes. Speedy is spelled a million ways, that's yeah. for sure. Yes. 
But but when you look at store names, say that last ten years, you, you often see the word market put in there, mm-hmm. and market conveys a different sense. It conveys uh, maybe a longer shop, and also maybe m- more food associated. Yes. With that. we've talked mm-hmm. about the the haves and have nots, and what the future may hold for our industry, which sounds like something that kicks off our podcast. But <laughs> I, I imagine one of the things that we're seeing is. Speed of service is essential for people who are just getting gas and yes. moving on or just getting a cup of coffee and moving on. But we might also be seeing the time somebody's spending in the store actually increase and that being a good thing because if they're spending longer time in the store, first off, bigger basket, but it probably also involves food service, which is something that you you certainly want because it carries higher margin. And if your food service is unique... They have to come to you as opposed to they can go anywhere for it. Are you looking at any of these metrics and seeing or hearing that the time spent in stores is increasing and it might be, in fact, a good thing? Um, Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I think that's part of where the industry needs to go as well. You know, it doesn't do a convenience operator any good to have someone plug in their EV outside and sit in the car. Hmm. There's there's no experience there. There's no upsell. There's no anything. So certainly I think that it's important for even as people are still driving combustion engine cars that they need to get into the habit of staying in the store for a little bit longer. But I mean, you know, you make a great point. We've kind of made it tough as an industry when you can pay outside for your gas and never have to talk to anyone or, you know, we're rush, 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 make mm-hmm. it fast, make it, make it speedy, make it quick. So we've kind of done that to ourselves, I believe, in the past, and it's going to be something that's hard to change. I think also, too, you know, this back to this legacy versus food forward kind of model, you know, small box, easy to get in, easy to get out, but there's not a whole lot of things to keep you. On the other hand, you have someone with a made to order program or indoor seating or free Wi-Fi or whatever those things are. I mean, that's that's what I think is the way to go. And it may get you from that three and a half minutes, which you know, we'll even call it four at this point. It may get you to seven or eight, which is a game changer for for retailers. Uh, you know, there's another thing I'm seeing a lot more of these game, you know, games of skill in the stores. You know, there's a couple of folks that are really heavy duty into that in our supplier community. Yeah. You know, that's got to be a valuable customer when they come in. They decide to play that game. Yeah, they're there you. for a while. <laughs> yeah, they they stick there for a while. Mm-hmm. So you know, with that being said. Maybe we're knocking on the right door, um, but for sure, you know, Nax's message is food will make people stay longer because they'll either wait to get their order or they'll stay to eat. That's how, that's how you improve the business. Yeah. Well, today is about looking at the numbers and looking at trends, not necessarily solving them, right. but giving retailers the tools to see what they might do to adjust hearing what's going around the country, outside of their region, et cetera. I want to end by focusing on on one thing that that you mentioned, Chris, and we talked about speed of service. You used the word experience. And one of the things that that we're hearing more and more and what we're planning more and more for the NAC show and other places is to really focus on the phrase customer experience. That is, that is the connection point that you just hear retailers talk about. Mm-hmm. We go on the road, we're visiting disco bathrooms, we're yeah. visiting dog Super parks, cool. we're visiting places, and it's all about how do you go in, and if somebody wants to get in and out fast, great, make sure they can do that. Don't slow that down. But defining that customer experience, and, and Chris, you you went through some of those ways. Yes. It's, yes. it's the bathrooms, mm-hmm. it's the the elevated food service, it's the customer service, it's yeah. concierge, it's it's making sure people want to come back. And easier said than done, For but sure. that seems to be the magic sauce right yeah. now. If you can create that customer experience, you probably can navigate all these good and bad trends going on. Yeah, I would agree. For, for certain, you know, when it takes 20 minutes to charge your car, you know, that opportunity is huge. But I'll also tell you, you know, those cool things that go on in some of these places are awesome. But I'm an old school guy. I'm operationally focused. If you clean your store and get product on your shelves and act friendly when people come in, that's a pretty good way to build your business, too. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, back to a couple of things that you mentioned earlier and how to improve this experience, 
the basics, the blocking and the tackling are the first step. And, you know, we've been struggling for help and having high turnover and all those other things. But at the end of the day, a lot of people in this industry could improve by a good margin if they just did some of those basic things. And then the next step is to have indoor eating or indoor seating or focus on your social media and things like that. There's lots of opportunities. But at the end of the day, I think we would all agree if you have a nice, clean store, you're probably off to a good start. Yeah. So I guess the next thing we're going to be looking for is Chris's hierarchy of needs. That starts at the bottom yeah. and goes oh, yeah. up towards yeah. self-actualization. And yes. we got a good thing going for our industry. If you can- yeah, we're, we're, we're going to need a lot more time for that for that chart. <laughs> well, we'll talk about that next time. Yes. But thank you for joining us today and, and just giving us an overview of, of what we heard at the SOI Summit, what you will see in the SOI report that's coming out in in June, the June next the magazine in June, we are going to give you a whole bunch of tools to look at what you need to do to take advantage of trends and opportunities to, to grow your business. So thank you once again for joining us today. My pleasure. Always love to join you yeah. guys. Thanks so much. And thanks for listening to Convenience Matters. Convenience Matters is brought to you by Nax and produced in partnership with Human Factor. For more information, visit convenience.org.